I can't remember where the hell I saw them now, but I did see the tries. Um, I think uh, I know no more than that. And I read one or two reports online. Sounded to me like Featherson did themselves a huge amount of good. Catalan didn't start well, eventually got to grips with it. But I know no more than that, uh, really, Mark. Yeah, um, it, it does, though, sound like a real positive for Featherstone, yeah. doesn't it? That they were able to be competitive for large, for, you know, 50, 50 or 60 minutes of this game, um, which is probably more than any of the other championship sides put up, actually, yeah. if, if we're honest. So it, yeah. it, it solidifies their place as the favourites, I think, in, in that competition. There was a charge that came out of the game. Alrix Acosta got charged with a grade A late hit on passer. He's got a no-match penalty for no- notice for that. He obviously doesn't have any um, relevant history there to, to yeah. call him up on. Um, actually, do you know what? I put a news story into the championship news section, but it's really relevant more to this game, isn't it? Because the team that it relates to played in this game, and that's that, um, that Championship leaders Feverson have completed the signing of France international Mark Corella. The fullback signs after losing, losing to lose Olympique. I mean, I think it's a great fit, isn't it? Because if there's any club who gave no shits about COVID rules, it was yes. Feverson. <laughs> yeah. um, and so Mark Corella really will fit in, at, fit in at that club, you'd think. You would. Uh, uh, jokes to one side. Um, I think it's a really good signing for Featherstone. I mean, uh, and it really solidifies the... Because I think, you know, we could all have our opinion about the fallout with Toulouse, et cetera, et cetera, but there's no doubt that Corella's a good player. And, uh, you know, he's already proven at the championship level what an influence he can be. So I, I think that's a really good signing for Featherstone and uh, can only strengthen their, uh, um, you know, the credentials when it comes to trying to get up into Super League this year. Yeah, they have to get his work permit and visa sorted, I think, still. But right. um, I, I don't know how, how straightforward or not that'll be for them. But obviously, if they're announcing it, they must be confident there. Well, I do feel a bit for Brandon Pickersgill because he's been, you know, he's been a very good player at that level for a couple of years at Bradford. And, um, and was it, yeah, and he's shown, I think, to be arguably the best player, most consistent player anyway, that Featherston have had so mm. far this year in the, in the backs. I, I, th- this is arguably an upgrade for all the reasons you said. I kind of think it's really adding strength on strength to have those two options there. That yeah. I think it just shows, it puts them a, ahead of all the other sides at the moment still. Yeah. I know there's talk about Lee trying to sign Blake Ferguson and whether that will come off, I don't know. Um, but that will then give them another weapon that's ridiculous to talk about at that level in terms of his skill and ability if we you know leave aside his his tendency to put his hands where they don't belong um <laughs> so yeah it, it's remarkable stuff but um Corella certainly is a championship player of of some repute isn't he so it's a good yeah, sign he he he, de- he definitely is and uh, as i say it can only strengthen um Featherstone's credentials, that's a good signing, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, next game to talk about, Hulk R versus Lee. This was one that I was quite excited to see what happened in, but I think the scoreline suggests excitement, but the reality of the story of the game, maybe not so much. It was Hulk R 24, Lee 18. But it was 18 nil to the Rovers at half time, and I think it was something like 24 8 until the last three minutes. 3,088 were there to watch it. Chris Kendall was given this game with the whistle. We got one fan view. Do you want to share that? From the inevitable Tom Andrews, Rovers put the queue on the rack and Lee did all the spoiling tactics they could get away with. Some lovely Mikey magic in the game, and nice to see the big red machine selling more dummies than Tommy Tippy. Uh, onwards to a sellout crowd on Friday. Hopefully, see some further improvement. I, I, again, I only saw the uh, saw the tries from this. Um, it, it it looked to me like Hulkiar were in complete control, and then they put the cue on the rack a little bit early. Um, some nice some nice tries though from from both sides, to be honest. Yeah, it, it, it was kind of a, a contest for the best try when you watch the highlights because um, yeah. the opening try 
was pretty good from KO. Was it Frankie Holton who scored it off some yeah. play from Mikey Lewis? Then Mikey Lewis scored his own really good try from some good play in midfield by um, uh, Kane Linnett, weren't it, who made the break in the end and dummied it to the outside, then passed it back to the inside to Lewis, who went yeah. through to score. Right. Um, so Mikey Lewis keeps shining up, doesn't he, well, with ball in hand. One thing that we did also learn from the highlights, and probably if you were at the game learned a bit more about, is Mikey Lewis doesn't belong at fullback. He was moved to fullback in the second half to make way for um, Rowan Mills to get some game time, who, who Smith had put on the bench, um, which is fair enough. It, you know, it's a game against a lower league side. You can maybe think about doing things like that, but he made a few mistakes at fullback. It looked like that that kind of helped Lee back into it a little bit. But also, Lee scored that great, um, slightly lucky, but great all the same try. The the young kid Jones, uh, the halfback, um, that might arguably be the best try of the game. Um, but the um, Joe Mellor try was another really good long-range try down the right-hand side for, for Lee. Um, but those two tries were way too late. And the other thing I noticed is Tom Nisbet's got really shit hair. <laughs> All these people who've got hair when I don't, and look at the way they misuse it. <laughs> oh, dear. That uh, that that sounds like um, an ongoing psychological problem you've got there now, Mark. That's a challenge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was a good. I thought it was a good game. I think uh, you know, Hull KR will be pleased that they didn't completely mess this up at the end because they could have done. Um, and uh, you know, clear, clearly, with the with a better team for most of the game, uh, will be relieved they got through it at the end and uh, you know move on to better things. Yeah, that lack of focus, I guess, to the finish line. When you compare that to say what Wigan did against Salford. Yeah, just um, absolutely ruthlessly strangled the game when you're on top. Um, and, you know, Hulk KR didn't here. And they might, on another day, they might pay for that. Yeah, and if Smith is still the Hulk KR coach... Well, then, there we go. <laughs> then then that's, that's an area that I think he'd want to fix up. But ultimately, it's not going to... They're not going to worry too much about, about it because they're into the next round of the Cup. A couple exactly. of bits of news, though. One of those that maybe is worth worrying about. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, Hull KR will be without Tonga international prop Albert Vette for up to three weeks after suffering a calf injury in the defeat at Catalan. Um, and Hull KR have announced the purchase of their home stadium in less worrying news, in much more positive news. It's great. Um, the move allows the club an exclusive option to purchase up to 15 acres of surrounding land as well from Hull City Council. The purchase of the stadium will still see Hull KR take on ownership of the ground for the first time since administration in the late 1990s. Uh, Tom Andrews got in touch on this story as well. He said, feels like a landmark moment in the club's history. The revenue streams this will open up are so important for the club's future. Or An already profitable club that now owns the stadium is sure the envy of many in the league especially them skimp pikeys over the river <laughs> up the fucking robins <laughs> never want to avoid sticking the knife in if you possibly can Tom <laughs> yeah but this ability to buy up land around the ground gives them an opportunity to um, enhance the training facilities with ownership and development of that and also community facilities um, you know, right next to the ground is the community club, isn't there? So, yeah. you've you, they've got those options to open that such type of things up, as well as look at um, non-match day commercial opportunities as well. Potentially, uh, they've already at the stadium done some things in recent years, like have have events there and concerts and stuff. But this means the club can have more control of that. It, it makes it a challenge for them, but at the same time, it makes them able to earn money off it, which I, I think is really positive for. Hull KR for certain, yeah. especially when you look at where they were, you yeah. know, 15 years ago and yeah. 30 years ago, you know, it's a big move forward from where they were 30 years ago. Absolutely. They were at death's door at one stage and uh, I think the it's yet another positive move uh, for the club and for, for the fans, you know, we've you've, they've had developments in the stadium before, owning the stadium now, getting the extra land, you know, let's see what they do with it, but it's it's a positive thing. Uh, and, and it's positive for Super League 
uh, that one of the clubs is um, you know firming up what they're doing here. I think it's uh, it's a good thing. Yeah, very good thing. Yep, certainly. Uh, right, let's move on to the game that got the most people talking. Oh um... my word! Oh <laughs> my word! <laughs> <laughs> Only 5,112 people turned up to the Leeds cast game, which is a bit disappointing. Liam Moore was the referee, um, but they're the, they're the not important facts. The, the important facts are 28 nil to Castleford at half time. The game was kind of done. It finished 40 points to 16 after a slight Leeds resurgence at the start of the second half. That Greg Eden basically said, nah, that's not happening, lads. Yeah. Um, and 40 points to 16, it finished. Yeah. Or Castleford over the hapless Leeds Rhinos. Um, yeah. Plenty of people got in touch. Do you want to take us through the first of those? Let's get started uh, on the uh, on the dissection. So at Stozza 1981, Dwyer three games for stud showing. I don't think it was. Uh, as an FC fan, this was satisfying, but also let this be a warning to the Rhinos. It takes five years for the Agar effect to work to wean off two laughing smiley faces yeah i think the there was possibly a tongue in the cheek with the dwyer point as well yeah. uh, <laughs> in relation to what happened with the far with more egregious that. offense that luke gale committed uh, uh, with with but what brad dwyer got was charged was was with tripping which it did look like a trip even if yeah. the studs might have caught the top of the boot yeah. the action that he committed was go, trying to trip the player uh, he's got a one-match penalty notice for that because, you know, he's already been banned this year. So he's got relevant record uh, to okay. apply to his grade A charge. Um, but yeah, Dr. Bob Phillips said, Cast defended hard, attacked well, and with flair at times, and deserved the win. Leeds were shapeless, soft, didn't play as a team through the first half and crumpled after every setback. If we start getting these games scored as two halves, then we're going to draw. <laughs> yeah, they did win the second half, to be, to be fair. Yeah, fair enough. Um, he also said, um, regarding the JJB post-match comments, he said, the sage spoke, we need to dig in we need to dig into the hole to build a skyscraper, but with our comfort and discomfort growing, we need to be emotional but physical as well, and it's mainly about not needing a hairdryer if you're bald. <laughs> <laughs> he's got uh, he's, he's getting the reputation like Eric Cantona did in football for his philosophical sayings isn't he JJB yeah well that's that's a, a recap of what was I think a 17 minute monologue that he went to in answering the question in the post-match com- uh, press conference with the um, written press you know after he'd been interviewed on TV so yeah God. Okay, interesting. Uh, Dr. Hideous, Leeds looked like they just couldn't be arsed for almost the entire game, and they deserve to be chased off the field with booze at half-time. JJB's rambling gibberish seems to have worked on the crowd, who were a lot more enthusiastic after the break. Cass took a little snooze at the start of the second half, but woke up quickly enough not to embarrass themselves by dribbling into the pillow. (laughs) <laughs> great imagery created there Dave um, Leighton Rhino said soft defence, clueless attack and poor attitude from Leeds, there seems to be some very deep issues at the club, even down to the state of the pitch, Heverington needs to open the checkbook and sign some NRL talent and quick, otherwise our season will be gone if it hasn't already uh, why... I don't think you can just open the checkbook nowadays though, can you? not in no. this sort of salary cap everything planned out, budgeted out He'd yeah. have to get rid of people. He'd have to bin off some big names to be able to open the checkbook. I think. Well, absolutely, and they've, they've already said the uh, the ex coach has got a role at the club, so that's interesting, isn't it? Um, White Pie. Well, JJB didn't inspire Leeds, who were abject for the vast majority of this game. A couple of quick Leeds tries early in the second stanza. Uh, may have got fat by Rob twitching, but Greg Eden did agree. Uh, did. Eden things and seal the game with an intercept. If things don't start to change soon at Leeds and Toulouse can pick up a win or two, Uncle Gary could be getting nervous. Mm, Fatboy Rob said, Cass provided the perfect 40 minutes, ripping apart a a piss-poor Leeds at ease. Try Machine Eden started it all off by swatting off two or three Leeds players by flies before releasing Edwards, who had his best game in the Cass shirt, to put a born-again Truman in. After that, it was plain sailing. Westerman could have beat the entire Leeds pack on his own, offloading for fun. O'Brien has regained his confidence after a spell at fullback. 
Milner and Massive back looking like they've been looking looking like they 